This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. And now for something interesting, because new hardware brings new questions. We have the 15-inch MacBook Pro here, the late 2016 edition with the touch bar on board, and it's running Windows 10, 64-bit home edition. So I know a lot of you are wondering, how's the trackpad going to work, this giant trackpad, right, inside of Windows? And what does the touch bar do? All that sort of stuff. So we're going to find out now. Oh, and hey, gaming. Gaming, too. All right, so here we have proof right there we're running Windows 10 this is anniversary edition and it's actually pretty easy to set up just go ahead and download the Windows 10 installation ISO from Microsoft's site and then the run the bootcamp assistant you don't need a flash drive it's not complicated anymore just download the ISO to your desktop run the bootcamp assistant it should automatically just find it on your desktop and it'll start the process and it'll download the necessary bootcamp drivers as device drivers from apple.com as part of the process it's pretty turnkey you do need a legal license key for Windows though so make sure you have that because eventually you know Windows just doesn't do a whole lot without the product key after a while. They take away features and all that sort of thing. So it's pretty painless to do. And, oh, you just set a partition size, so keep that in mind. Those of you who really want to do boot camp or install a VM and spend a lot of time, say, in Parallels, probably want to get something bigger than the base 256 gig SSD because, you know, you install one game and Windows and there goes 75 gigs of a 100 gig partition just like that. So by default, things are set up pretty well. 200% scaling is a reasonable scaling for this display running Windows. A trackpad and mouse are all basic settings. In fact, you really want to go into the bootcamp settings for, for your trackpad and mouse to fine tune it because there's no tap to click enabled. The right click isn't enabled. Now, aha, do you really want right click enabled? Uh, this is a giant trackpad, right? So the right click zone is pretty darn large. And I have enabled it, and I'm not sure if I would actually keep it that way. So we're going to open up. The boot cam control panel right here so you can see so you, you you choose what you want to boot so this is how you switch back to mac os you've got your trackpad settings right here so i've enabled tap to click i haven't turned on click dragging because that usually makes me kind of crazy but you know i'm going to turn that on now because i've had trouble resizing windows so far and i've got secondary tap turned on with two fingers that is on by default and that works pretty well too so let's open a window and see if i can resize it now and I still can't really, oh, there we go. This is not working very well <laughs> right now. The, the, the clicking and dragging to resize windows and stuff like that, for some reason it's not. But while we're at it, here is the Radeon control panel that's installed. So you get that installed as well, which is, is nice to have for the Radeon graphics here. So there, you don't have to do a lot. That's what I'm trying to tell you. And with the touch bar what happens with the touch bar Ooh, ah, it's, here's what happens with the touch bar it's your multimedia keys by default which is well pretty convenient and if you hit the FN key it switches to the FN key so those of you who need the FN key there you go you just hold in FN and hit your F key that you need obviously we've got the good old escape key right there so none of the fancy stuff that you'll see when you're running Mac OS on this so how about those nice trackpad gestures under Mac OS? Not so much here. We do have pinch to zoom, but it's like sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's very flaky right now. Hopefully that will improve too. Sometimes I get it working, sometimes I don't. Doing this works though, up and down with two fingers, which is fine. But there's a utility called Trackpad++, Plus Plus, and you might want to install that if you're going to run Windows because it actually brings back a lot of gestures and more granular control that you might be missing if you're used to Mac OS. By the way, Touch ID does absolutely nothing inside of Windows. It just becomes a power button, and that's it. Keyboard backlighting, as per normal, is adjustable, just as if you were running Mac OS, and the touch bar strip is automatically illuminated, shall we say. So that's handled, too. Now, how about palm rejection? When you have a keyboard this big, oh my goodness. No, I'm not typing very well on this keyboard right now because it's at a funny angle. But as you can see, I'm resting my hands on here, and it's doing a pretty good job. There was one phantom right click, but I'm kind of trying hard, actually, to mess it up. Oh, now I've moved the cursor. So all in all, it works better than you might expect in Windows. It's not unusable. It's not as good as under Mac OS, but it is usable. Now, ever since we've had these Force Touch trackpads, we've had Force Touch that goes away under Windows. So when you press it, it's, it's electromechanically actually disabled from doing the deeper click. So you have the shallow click, which is your normal click and right click, but there's no deep press click here. So you don't get the fancy stuff here.
So how about heat? This always runs on the dedicated graphics. That's been the problem with bootcamp for so long. There's no switchable graphics here. And it runs hotter as a result. Battery life is shorter. I think that's why a lot of people who used to buy Macs because they really like the hardware uh, have stopped doing that now if they always want to run Windows. Now, if you just need to run Windows sometimes, then it makes sense. But if you want a 100% all the time Windows machine, you can't switch graphics here and it's going to run hotter. Now, the fans are not as really as loud as they are in the previous generation model that I own. And that's the benefit of the Intel Skylake and the newer generation AMD graphics that may not be much faster, but they are more power efficient. They don't get as hot. So the nice thing is you're not going to hear the fan screaming as much as you did in the old days, but the trackpad gets actually noticeably toasty at times doing moderate productivity work. Say working on Photoshop, compiling some code, that sort of thing. If you're just streaming Netflix, not so much. If you're working on a Word document, there'll be warmth here. It's definitely warm right now, just sitting here, we're not even doing anything. But it doesn't get burning hot. And the bottom will get hotter too. And we'll throw in some thermal pictures so you can see the temperatures. But it's not that much hotter than when it's running Mac OS, actually. So that's that's something. That's an improvement over some previous generation MacBook Pro 15-inch models with dedicated graphics running Windows. So how about gaming? One of the reasons you might want to do boot camp, you might want to run Windows. Well, first is if you're doing software development on multiple platforms, you need VMs for that. Or if you just need some emulation for some IT jobs. And other than that, there's also gaming. So we have Steam installed, and we're going to try Fallout 4, which is a pretty darn demanding game, and see how it does. All right, so now we're in Fallout 4 on the MacBook Pro, Radeon 450 graphics here. And I'm using an Xbox controller with this, which meant I had to use a USB-C dongle hub adapter thingy just to plug that in there. So let's see how it plays. We are running at 1920 by 1200 resolution on medium settings. And our frame rate is at about 30 right now. But occasionally it picks up when we look at Nick here, it goes up to 40, so you get the idea. It's pretty deserted in Cambridge now. Maybe I've killed everybody. And we're back in the 30s. So the frame rate's picking up a little bit to 37. And again, on medium settings. So it's falling a little bit below the Dell XPS 15 with NVIDIA GTX 960 graphics there. But you can play games. The other thing is, it is going to get hot, but it's not getting very loud. The fans really haven't ramped up on, on high, which is pretty surprising. So that AMD GPU is pretty power efficient. So there you have it. So Boot Camp is something you might want to use if you're playing games, because you want direct access to the hardware and to the graphics card. So Boot Camp would be the way to go here versus something like Parallels, for example, if you want the, the best possible performance. So there you go. As expected, most everything actually does work. Auto brightness works. The speakers sound as good under Windows as they do under Mac OS, though. There is a Realtek driver bug with audio popping, which is funny. This is something we saw in Skylake laptops in the Windows PC land like a year ago when Skylake first came out. I guess Apple's using older drivers. So I would download updated audio drivers from Realtek if you can to avoid that audio popping issue. Some people apparently have blown out the speakers, they say, doing that. But the trackpad works better than expected in terms of palm rejection here. Uh, the interesting thing is, is once you put Windows on this, you know, it kind of blends into the crowd a little bit and it becomes that 15 inch laptop with a kind of odd keyboard and, and a very big trackpad, but a very pretty small bezel display that's nice enough looking. It it's, loses a lot of the distinctive touches that running Mac OS brings to it, including, well, the touch bar and all the things that the touch bar can do, the forest touch, all those sort of things. I've gone away. The biggest drawback always with this is the battery life is going to be reduced if you're going to run Windows on this. And also, it's always going to be running on dedicated graphics, which is all the reason why, well, the battery life is going to be reduced. It's going to be a bit hotter too. So it's not a replacement for a Windows machine, but I know a lot of you need to run Windows sometimes either via bootcamp or in a virtual machine via Parallels or something else. And that's how it rolls. It works actually pretty well. There's some bugs, obviously, they need to work out with the trackpad drivers. It's really not a great and pleasant experience. It's not like using it on the Mac OS side of things. And the speaker drivers, I'm sure will, you know, Apple will make those better drivers available soon enough under boot camping. But all in all, it works. And that's how all the new features do in Windows 10. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you liked it.